Hey Mario in our nation's capital of Washington DC, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut bifocal transition lenses for your new Silhouette Series 7799, the color is 6017, and let's show you how this works. I'm going to go to my computer here, I'm going to start a new job, let's see this. You have new job. I'm going to give this one number 1697. I'm going to type that in there, 1697. Put your name real quick. Let's go ahead and put Mario in there. Enter your last name real quick so I have that on file as well. And then we're going to go to find the shape that you want. We're going to type in the shape of 7613. 7613 and we're going to get several silhouette sizes 50 48 and 46 you want size 48 i'm going to select that one hopefully you can see that that's the shape that you have picked out just give it a quick check mark that that's the one i want and then i'm going to send it over to the tracer i'm going to take uh, my little scanning wand place it on the barcode there and in just a moment your shape is going to pop up onto the computer Ah, we get to use the small blocks. Okay, that we can do. And when I take that off there, that's gonna be the shape of your lens and those are the two drill holes that are gonna go on there. So, let me grab my scissors here. I'm gonna need those. These are the blocks that I have to use. I like to call them Jenny from the block. The little silver button on the back is a magnet that's gonna do its job twice, once in the tracer, once in the edger. But I need to apply a double-sided adhesive sticker of which I am running out. The black side is the sticky side and these are made by 3M. I'm going to put these onto the block. These are my premium premium pads that I use for the high-end lenses that I'm doing. Every job is special. This one is extra special. So I'm just going to trim this one down just a bit. These have the best grip and for all of the drill mount lenses because of the time and expense involved I'm going to use the best quality products that I have. So let me pull the paper off and you can see, see the 3M logo. I'm going to allow the magnet to do its job the first time and hold that into place. I'm going to take your right lens. I'm going to put it there. Now your pupillary distance for single vision I use the distance. For a line style bifocal I use the near pupillary distance which is 61. I'm going to use half of that which is 30.5 and I'm going to type that into the computer there. I'm going to put your bifocal height of 10 into this box. It's starting at 14 which is half the length of your, of your lens. That is 10. I'm going to select the type of lens I'm cutting which is a line style bifocal. This graph tells me exactly where to place the lens so that it's going to fit at the correct height and be lined up just perfectly. I've got that in there. I don't want the bifocal to be crooked like that. Hopefully you can see that like a boat rocking in the water. Get everything lined up just perfectly. And I do thank you for your patience. This video is going to run about 25 to 30 minutes long, which is longer than just about all my other ones. But that's what's involved with a drill mount. But I'm going to show you everything since you're curious. I'm going to hit that button and that block is now going to be applied to your right lens. And let's do the same thing now for your left lens. It's going to flip over. It's going to mirror your pupillary distance of 30.5. We're going to do a height of 10. We're going to get everything lined up just perfectly where it's supposed to go. Peel the paper away from the block. Again to show the 3M logos. Use the magnet to hold it in place in this arm. And then I'm going to apply the block to your lens. Okay, so let me actually show you. This is the edger. This is what costs $40,000. I recommend everyone go out and buy one. Put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut lenses at home. You won't need me anymore. Although the actual cutting wheel, let me grab this here. The actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. That's going to act like a heavy grid sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center is going to clean it up afterwards. This is a polishing wheel because I'm going to polish your lenses. And underneath here, Actually, let me go ahead and bring this out so you can see it. Do a little programming real quick. Door is going to open. Things are going to move into place. This is what's going to apply the safety bevel to the front and the back surface of your lens. And this is the actual drill bit that is going to drill the holes in your lenses. So I'm going to bring everything back to where it belongs. 
and I'm going to take your right lens and I'm going to actually I need to use the small blocks the small chuck or as I like to say the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck but I'm going to place the smaller chuck this is what's going to hold your lens in place while it is cutting when I get the magnets lined up just right it is just like that so let me go ahead and attach this in there that just pops on again a magnet holds that in place too I'm going to put your lens into the chuck and as a, you heard me refer to it as the Charles because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck but I'm going to pull your shape onto the computer and you can see the two drill holes on either side these are polycarbonate lenses if they were another material I could select that I am going to cut these on the soft cycle so I'm going to take it off the red star and put it on the two green stars this is the polish I do want to polish I'm going to put a light bevel on the front <coughs> excuse me a heavier bevel on the back and this little green button will start everything and the block the chuck is going to close and then the lens is going to be traced by two white calipers it's going to trace the shape of the right side of your of the lens to make sure the lens is large enough to fit and of course it's going to go around twice measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel and the drill hole so you have the best cosmetic look possible just checking that the lens is the correct thickness to do that so in just a moment the lens is going to drop down the cutting wheel is going to move into place and then the lens is going to cut down drop down and begin cutting now if you notice there is water running in the background that's just to collect the optical sawdust polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic cut wet as well as trivex I do I am cutting it on the soft cycle which is making it go a little bit slower so it does not torque and as you can see that is your lens beginning to cut and your lenses are made out of polycarbonate polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic it is virtually unbreakable they're also bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built right into the lens we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions creams and sprays that need to be reapplied every few hours when you go outside this is permanent and will never need to be reapplied i am using polycarbonate for a couple reasons one it's thinner and lighter and again as I mentioned it's unbreakable so when I drill when this machine drills the holes in the lens if I were to use regular plastic not today or tomorrow but months or even years from now your lens could chip or flake and that will never happen with polycarbonate lenses it's the lens of choice that I that I prefer to work with for the reason that you will never have a problem with it years from now Now if you notice your lens is still completely flat just like a nickel if I were to take it out now it would stand up on the counter it's now just measuring the thickness of the lens to make sure everything was cut properly this machine which again costs forty thousand dollars has a built-in check and balance system to make sure everything is perfect it's again measuring the thickness of the lens to make sure it's the proper thickness of course I've already sent that to the lab and specified what I'll be doing this is a custom made custom ground lens so I do thank you for your patience single vision lenses I can pull right off the shelf but a bifocal I need to to do this with so right now it is get putting an extra flat bevel onto your lens just to smooth out anything that could be left over from the roughing wheel now of course you get free single vision lenses with the purchase of any frame from me so water has just kicked in that tells me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle now it's on the polishing wheel and you're going to have a high luster polish when it comes off of here it's cooling the lens down at this point and putting the finishing polish on the edge of the lens but as i was saying at freeprescriptionlenses.com anyone else if you have single vision lenses you would get these lenses for free this frame sells for $250 the upgrade to a line style bifocal is 
it's an I'm sorry 69.99 it's an additional 59.99 for the transition portion of your lens which brings your total to $379.98 $250 for the frame and single vision lenses if you need them for distance or reading a bifocal is $69.99 additional and the transition photochromic gray lens is an additional $59.99 so again your total is $379.98 so that arm that has just moved into place has the little tiny wheel at the end of it, something you would find at the end of a Dremel tool. That is what's applying what's known as the safety bevel. It is applying it to the convex front surface of the lens. And now it is moving over and it's going to apply it to the back surface concave surface of the lens. And that concludes the vocabulary lesson of the day. Just in case this should have any contact with your cheek, which it won't, it's just going to be nice and smooth. Now the arm's going to move back into place. And we're going to go, the machine is going to go ahead and begin to drill holes in your lens. You can see the drill tip spinning very fast and has now approached and is touching your lens. And hopefully you'll see it as it comes through on the other side. It is starting with the external nasal portion of the lens closest to your nose. It has come through there. Once it drills the holes, it kind of reams it out just a little bit. That's what it's doing now to making it thicker. This is a one millimeter drill bit. The hole for the silhouette is a 1.4 millimeter hole. So after it goes through, now this is the one, the inner drill bit closest to your eye. It just drilled the one closest to your nose and now it's coming through doing the one closest to your eye. It is a one millimeter drill bit, but again, the hole is 1.4 millimeters, so it reams it out where I'm going to put the sleeves, which is going to hold it in place. It is now doing the third drill hole, which is what the temple is going to attach to, or through, I should say. It is doing it closest to the eye itself. It's going to ream out the hole as you see the lens move just a little bit. And now it's going to do the furthest, the most outside temporal hole. little car wash at the end cleaning everything up and in just a moment I will open the door with my mind and I will take your lens out I can do lots of stuff with my mind I can melt ice with my mind I can it just takes a little while but I can do it okay so I'm gonna go ahead and dry your lens off I'm gonna set it on the counter let's go ahead and take your left lens flip this over to the L place the lens into the chuck hit the green button the door closes, the clamp is going to shut, and then the left lens is going to be traced to make sure it is large enough to fit the diameter of the lens size required, going all the way around. And of course, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point and to make sure that the lens is thick enough to work with, to meet the specifications of a drill mount as it taps your lenses. Again, each caliper is measuring the thickness at every point as it comes in. It passed inspection and now the lens is going to drop down on the cutting wheel which is going to move into place. Again water begins running in the background to collect any optical sawdust while the lens touches down onto the cutting wheel. Years ago we used to have to do the drilling by hand. Pay an extra ten thousand dollars with the newer equipment. This machine normally runs thirty thousand but to get the drilling option, that's another $10,000. But it's nice to be able to do my own silhouettes or any type of drill mount without having to send out for them. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this block. It is no longer needed. Remove that sticker. That is not needed. I want to dry the lens off so it's nice and dry as I continue to work with it. So this is the lens. Let's go ahead and get it mounted. These are the sleeves that are going to go through the holes. I need four of them. Let me take two out and put them on the counter. Let me get two more to work with this lens. Put the lid back on. So, I'm going to... Actually, I see one thing I want to clean up on your lens. I like the nice polished edge there. 
but I'm going to put the sleeve through the lens, push that through, do the same thing, and I'm inserting from the rear the concave portion of your lens. That pushes through. I need to trim the excess off, so where's my little cigar cutting tool? There it is. It has two holes here. I place the sleeves into those two holes and I snip. Congratulations, Miss Mendelbaum, it's a boy. Um, sorry, a little joke there. Clean out the tips that are in there. Do the same thing for the other side. Put those in. I'm gonna slide those two pieces into the two holes here and then snip. It's twins. Okay, I like to use a thumbtack to ream that out because it pinches them down just a little bit. I'm gonna use the thumbtack to open the holes up. This is a little technique that I developed. I'm sure not everyone does this. I'm just a perfectionist when it comes to cutting the lenses and that's what I do. I wanna go ahead and clean off any more optical debris that may be around the edge of the lens. Now would be a good time to do that. And now let's go ahead and take your frame out of the box that it comes in. These are made in Austria, the Silhouette brand. This is how they ship them to me inside of your magnetic case. Of course, whoa, whoa, come around. Everything's dancing around. Your Silhouette cleaning cloth, your Silhouette case, and of course you're gonna receive all the manufacturer's original packaging anytime you purchase from me. But this is your frame. This is how it comes, the three parts, the one bridge and the two temples. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to prevent the temples from rubbing together while being shipped from Italy. Italy, Austria, a little bit over, still has the Alps. I'm gonna go ahead and take the pieces apart off of the, the holder. Come on, get off of that, get off of there. Set that down there and of course, it comes with its own little sleeves, but I've just used those. So I'm gonna put those, these little sleeves that I took out and I'm gonna, a little bit of junk mail. Of course, you're gonna get all of that too in several languages. And let's go ahead, this is your bridge. The color 6107 is the pewter. Of course, I think they call it pine cone. I call it pewter. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm going to take the first set of prongs, push them in there, just get them seated. Whoa, not enough, not enough. Let me push again. It's still alive, it's trying to fight with me. There we go. I'm going to take my pliers to clamp that together. One side of the pliers, this side fits the back of the sleeve. This actually can rock back and forth based on the thickness of your lens. That's why this pair of pliers cost $85. There's no reason that it should. It's just that they, they don't sell a lot of drill mount equipment. If everyone went out and bought this 40,000 piece of equipment, this thing would drop down to $20. And of course, Silhouette and Adidas drill mounts are made by the same company, so the tool works on both. So the bridge is now attached to the right lens. Let's go ahead and, without making the mistake, which I've done in the past, that's the left temple. Let me not put that on. Let's put the right temple on there. And again, I get it started. I press down so it stays on its own. I come back and I use the tool and I am going to press that in there. The sleeves themselves that you can see here are known as compression fittings. That is the back of it, which is gonna go against the back of the lens. These go through the lens. These glasses are pretty high tech. These are the only glasses that NASA allows into space for a couple reasons. 1.5 grams. There's no screws to ever come loose, which is why they came up with one of the astronauts. I believe it was Gus Grissom, but don't quote me on that. During takeoff, the vibration of the rockets were so strong, the Saturn V, the eye wire screw in his glasses came loose and it could have been inhaled into the lungs because they were wearing the closed respirators. And so they've come up with a design where there's no more screws to ever affect or can cause serious bodily harm to an astronaut during takeoff. And of course, the other feature, the memory metal very few adjustments needed in zero gravity when you're out there in space because there's no opticians like me out there to adjust the glasses for you and of course until they come up with 20 year old astronauts which they won't all of them are in their 40s because you have to train for 25 years before you go up in space 
but you didn't realize that now you have something in common with every astronaut who's ever gone into space in, in recent era. You wear the same pair of glasses that they do. And that was good timing. The left lens is just finishing up. Where are we now? Talking about Space Age watches. We're at 435 on Saturday, May 9th, 82 degrees in my hometown of Durham, North Carolina. And actually, I had a physics professor back in college that had worked with the astronauts before they went up. He was in charge of the Moorhead Planetarium with the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, which is right next door, 11 miles away from the campus of Duke University. So let me clean the lenses off here, remove any optical debris that may be on there that did not wash off. I can, let me clean, clean up my surface, let's go ahead and use these compression fittings that Silhouette has patented, everyone else has copied, slide that through the first lens, and there's actually one company out there that owns 80% of all the optical shops out there, and they've had trouble with some of the lesser expensive drill mounts that they sold, and they now have a blanket policy where you cannot purchase any of their drill mount frames anymore because of the problems that they had had. Some like to use nuts and bolts or screws which invariably come loose. Silhouette again has patented the compression fitting which never has any problems of coming loose. I shouldn't say never, it's extremely rare. But one quick squeeze with the pliers and it's clamped back down tight. These are one of the lightest weight, the most comfortable pair of glasses out there. and you're paying for the special type of metal come on i can find that hole there we go but there's nothing more durable there's nothing lighter weight and of course there's nothing more minimalist for people who don't like to wear glasses it looks like you're almost wearing nothing you also get the added benefit that there's nothing lighter weight and there's nothing stronger so again i'm going to put the pliers on there and i'm going to clamp down and now the prongs have gone through and are clamped into the compression fitting of the lens on the nasal side. Let's do the same thing on the temporal side. Get a little vocabulary lesson today, along with a little bit of NASA history. Push the prongs down in there. It is a snug fit. I get a groove on my finger when I press them on there. But hey, I am a craftsman and that's what happens. So again, I'm going to take the pliers. I have placed the pad that moves back and forth to fit the curvature of the lens. The stationary pad goes on the back and I am now going to squeeze that together and that goes in there. So at this portion I want to actually inspect the frame or the lenses I should say. I want to inspect the lenses and make sure that they pass inspection. Your right eye reads minus 50 minus two and a quarter at 89. I'm going to turn the axis wheel of my Marco 101 lensometer to 89, which is one tick mark away from 80. I'm going to, or 90 I should say. I'm going to place your lens in there and I'm going to read the power off of your lens and I am getting minus 50. So the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R and it starts at zero, which is Plano. Which is, which is also a city in Texas, but it's also, some people like to call it Plano, but I, I'm lazy, I call it Plano. And it starts at zero and goes up in increments of 0.25, a quarter, as you go. So 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, and so on. You need two steps of correction for your farsighted. You are nearsighted, so you need two steps of farsighted correction to make everything the correct size at a distance. Most of your prescription is astigmatic, which means you have astigmatism. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. Everyone freaks out when they hear that. It is not a disease. It is not an affliction. It is just referring to a shape. Don't freak out everybody. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. You don't panic when you hear that. So you need two steps of correction for your farsightedness, but you need nine additional steps for your astigmatism correction. This first number makes everything the correct size. Without your glasses on, everything is actually a little bit larger than it really appears in life. So your lens is the reason why there's a minus sign. It minifies by two steps. Now astigmatism is why you squint. When you squint, you're trying to change the shape of your eye. And by doing that, 
Astigmatism is why sixes and eights, or the letters P and F, look alike. It is the fine tune knob. This first number makes everything the correct size. The second number makes everything nice and crisp. Think of it as the fine tune knob. We're going to turn that fine tune knob to 89. A straight line is 0 to 180. So from the left side of this that's wiggling is at 0. 90 is at the middle. 180 is over to the far right. And of course, 270 at the very bottom, for those of you keeping score at home, 270 and 90 are 180 degrees apart. Zero and 180 are 180 degrees apart. So we're going to turn that fine two knob to 89, which is just shy of the 90th meridian. Your left eye, you need two steps of farsighted correction, but you only need nine steps of astigmatism correction. And we're going to turn that fine two knob to 75. So we're going to stop that knob just before we get to 80, 85, or 90. So these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. Now I, I started off at 0.50, which is minus 50. Hey, my high-tech pen holder, I'm about to knock that off. You like that? You like that when you need a pen and got to find it? So I'm now going to inspect to make sure your astigmatism is at the correct place. I'm going to check that, and we are getting 275 which is one tick mark away from three. Can you see that there? Now, remember high school algebra where you add the two like signs together? Yeah, me either. I don't remember high school algebra, but I know today's terms. If someone had borrowed 50 cents from you and then they borrowed another $2.25, they would owe you $2.75. That's where we're at, 275, one quarter away from three. So let's go ahead and inspect your left lens, minus 50, minus 175. Put that in there. Oh, I gotta turn the axis wheel to 75. Everything looked blurry for a second, that scared me. So again, we're at minus 50, which is exactly halfway between zero and one. Check your astigmatism correction of 175, and we're gonna end up at two and a quarter. One tick mark away from two, 250, 275, three. So that is made correctly. Your pupillary distance is 61. Distance is 64, the near is 61, which is what we use in a bifocal. I'm gonna place the card around, so hopefully you can see it, maybe not if I just hold it up to the light. I'm gonna start at the inside corner of this bifocal and measure to the outside corner of this one. And when I place the zero against my thumb on your right lens, and when we read off the left, we're getting 61 millimeters, so that is made perfectly also. I also like to use this time as I clean your lenses and mention free shipping anywhere in the United States. But I'm going to get your frame in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. Now, when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could be too loose or too tight, although these with silhouettes, that's just about impossible. But there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But again, as I mentioned, I'm gonna get them in a three-point stance where they sit level on the counter. I flip them over. When I say level, I place them on, on the counter and, and I press down and they wobble. That's because I have one ear that is higher than the other. I press down, there is no wobble. I make sure that the tension is the same on both sides. And that is that. So this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate. Oh, wait, wait. Let me inspect the bifocal. Give you your money's worth. So again, we started out at minus 50. Let's do the left because we're still on 75 back here. When I read the power, I'm getting minus 50. So you need an additional two steps for your bifocal strength. Now, if you were to get reading glasses, again, this is where the unlike signs, this is a plus, this magnifies. If you needed reading glasses, you would get a plus 150 because you would subtract 50 from the two. Now, unfortunately, no reading glasses are gonna correct for your astigmatism, but in a pinch, if you had to balance your checkbook or just look at a text, you could make do with a plus 150 lens. If you were to try and read anything for more than several minutes, it's gonna be hard for you to distinguish the an E and a an F, a P and a an F, things like that. That's what your stigmatism correction is going to correct for. Now this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, I'm gonna, which means I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions box. And as you will see, it takes about 10 to 50, I'm sorry, 30 to 45 seconds for them to darken. When you go outside, it takes a little bit longer. When you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now Mario, pay attention at this point. 
as you will see all transition lenses will get dark on day one give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks after that they will be at their maximum darkness and they will work for years with maximum performance the only time they will not work is if you're behind the windshield in a traditional car your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your upholstery doesn't rot or your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun and that's why they don't turn dark in a car now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken they're also temperature sensitive meaning that when it's 85 and 90 degrees and below they get darker than they do when it's 95 to 105. when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable everyone's miserable when it's 100 degrees and no one likes to work 100 percent so this is the first time they've been activated don't worry mario they're going to keep darkening come on we talked about that don't you remember so that's that i hope if anyone has any questions, just enjoy, I'm sorry, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. I'm getting ahead of myself. Mario, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the Silhouette Shape 7613 for your Silhouette Chassis 7799. Of course, this is your magnetic case that these slide into. And you will be getting a Silhouette cleaning cloth. And of course, I'm going to provide one of my own cleaning cloths with instructions on how to care for them so that uh, they will both last you not only the glasses but the case and the cloth will last you for years i'm also going to send you out a photo request to have your picture on the website so mario i hope you enjoyed watching as i made this i know this is one of my longer videos i do thank you for your patience and anyone else out there hopefully got the chance to see how i bring that love and feeling back to glasses thank you